Magician by um, Raymond E. Feist. Is it Feist or? Yeah, I think yeah. it's Feist. Feist yeah. yeah. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, you know more about this, so I'll let you uh, kind of break down the um, the world and. Okay, so and that kind of stuff. you have a world very similar to uh, like Tolkien or um, mm. Baldur's Gate, even like there's yep. dark elves and yep. elves, yep. orcs, stuff like that. Actually, uh, no, I don't think there's orcs. There's goblins. Yeah, but there's those usual. There's the usual and orcs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so you have a a regular world like that, a fantasy type world, but there is an overall universe of different worlds, mm. and there's rifts that, um, in between those worlds, that you can create magic portals to go to different ones. This is about the main world with our main characters on it. Pug. Pug and Thomas. Mm. Or Thomas, as Thomas. it's called. Yeah. And their, t- their adventures in a rift war where the world of Kalawan, which is the one opposite um, Krondor, yeah. a rift opens and the magic people that or the magicians from that world come through and want to basically overthrow the world of the fantasy world. And, and Kalawan is... Um, yeah. Oriental kind of Japanese Asia kind of inspired yeah, feudal ge- society. Yeah, and Krondor is more traditional European feudal yep. society. Right? Um, there's almost even a, um, a Roman element to the the Kalawan world, where mm. there's like highly coloured right houses and there's an emperor and like right, I know it's yeah. part Japanese as well yeah. and, uh, that feudal system, but it's like they have these honor systems and like uh everything is made there's slaves like they have certain ways that they conduct war and above everything magic mm. is above the law so if you're a magician you're above the law yeah the, the great ones as mm. they call them right yeah. so if you own a house in Calawan and a great one turns up and says get out of this house yeah. i'm gonna stay here tonight you basically have to do it yeah uh I- and it's interesting because they have weird like praying mantis type creatures on that world that like they use as horses and um, they have uh, weird like insect type creatures that are like sentient that can talk and they're yeah. like a hive mind and That's right. things like that. Um, and it's just completely different to anything that we've seen but um, you have this really strange rich environment, this rich world invading something that would be quite normal in a fantasy yeah um and that was great to see so you have two you have these two main characters pug who's a magician's apprentice on the fantasy world and thomas who thomas who's a just a a regular like knight knight's apprentice and they go into this war and they get separated and pug Mm. gets um enslaved and he gets taken back to the, the the japanese type world yeah and in that world, he becomes a, a slave, one. and well, he becomes, yeah. a, and then he becomes a, a, a great one. He yeah. gets taught the higher art of magic, mm. and he had such a problem learning magic on his world because it was a, a different, a lower one, or different, yeah, yeah, like a lower version of magic. But it's lower in a way, in a way where like one's applied and one's not applied, sort of thing. Mm. It's a that's a completely different type of magic. So one might be like shooting lightning, and another one might be like. Uh, like psycho like going inside someone's mind or something right, like that yeah. and um yeah it was really interesting it was a really interesting book and you had thomas finding this armor mm. and he becomes this it's ancient like, creature kind of possessed armor kind of right? yeah possessed armor and, and it, it slowly changes him to be more elf like yeah like an elf yeah he hooks up with the elf queen yeah and it's like a, a huge journey because it's like these 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 felt kids like a that, trilogy <laughs> it did it felt like a trilogy i think it actually was two books originally yeah yeah um but well i think it was one book and but to make more money they split into two. Oh, okay right so um, but there was two distinct parts to it which yeah yeah sense. yeah um but you had really you did have like a mythic journey where mm. you go along with these kids you go into the adolescent you follow them through the adolescence and then you 
end off with them as men. Yeah. And you see their whole journey. And Thomas, Thomas is actually being possessed by this armor that's helping save his life on, on a mm. daily basis, helping him like win this war. Yeah. He's learning and growing and he's becoming this like person. But then on the other hand, like the entity inside this armor is learning and growing as well. Yeah. And, like and that's the malicious saving. intent. Yeah. Like, he kills like a bunch of people, like yeah. prisoners of war and stuff. And he's like kind of shitty with the elf queen. Yeah, a little bit. Um, and people, like grabs people her and were con- and stuff. Yeah, and people were, like considering uh, murdering him because he's a threat. Yeah, he yeah. Could develop into a, a, a threat. Um. But yeah, there's lots of like side stories as well where the ha- you have like the the king of Crondor dies, mm. and it goes to the earl, and then the earl dies, and then like yeah. his son ends up inheriting. But then we find and out that Martin. that um yeah the woodsman or the woodsman from the start is a bastard as a bastard child who yeah. he was, was, i think it was legitimized on his on his death on bed, his yeah. dad's deathbed yeah um so you find out all these like little interesting like things about these different side characters and stuff and mm. i think it's great um yeah so what do you want to rate it um eight and a half well yeah okay yeah i i really liked it so the first half it took me i don't know two weeks to get through three weeks something like that and then the second half i read through in like two days wow yeah cool it was yeah it's a fantastic book and better than i anticipated it being and it's like a great middle ground between classic fantasy and more modern fantasy I think. yeah i think so as well There's i think like good that... elements of both um yeah, I can't. I was surprised to see it's it's over forty years old. Um, I thought it'd be a bit more modern, but yeah, it's well written. Um, yeah, like you were saying, seeing the characters grow and change was fantastic. Um, and yeah, felt like a a series rather than one book. And um, what else? Yeah, I really liked the two. Like, there were other points of view, but um, Pug and Thomas's, Thomas's journey were both really cool. Um, yeah, I, I reckon I'd give it a 9, mm. or maybe an 8.5. I, th- I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I've done oh. it twice now. Okay. So, uh, originally I re- started reading it. I got right. a book off of someone, and it was fucking haggard and horrible. <laughs> um, and I about i think about halfway through the book because it's quite long i was like i can't do this anymore because there's pages falling out and stuff oh, and I, then i ended up just doing the audio and it was amazing mm. and the a narrator was amazing as well it's yeah. a, a guy from like star trek or something okay um or peter joyce or something like that yeah, he's a great actor mm. great actor um and i thought it was amazing i thought the, the visual descriptions were great I thought that there was enough grittiness in it as well for it to be perfect for me and yep. right on the edge for you. Yeah. Like that part where, like, you know, Pug's hand's completely fucked. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, how did that happen? He's, um, he was cut he's, by a sword or some kind of blade, eh? Yeah. yeah. As a slave, he's yeah. like punished for some reason. Yeah. Um, was it his, like, one of the, because he was like, um, the master head that was a cunt yeah and he wanted to kill him because he embarrassed him or something yep yeah and then like eventually that that person killed himself or something yeah 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 because like honor is such a such a huge thing on that japanese world um yeah it's like would you allow me to kill myself because of the dishonor or something yeah yeah Yeah. um yeah i thought although I think like there was a couple of scenes where he's like his hands aching, but it didn't seem to affect him that much later on. on. Yeah, I feel like uh, when he got the magic and stuff, they probably mm. did something to it. But yeah. I thought it was cool that like they didn't, he didn't shy away from actually injuring his characters or even yeah. like wanting to almost kill them. Mm. I thought that um, the Valharu and like the the entity in Thomas was really really interesting, and I thought yeah. that like. Um, finding out that he's like the dragon lord mm. and that like dragons existed in this world and that like yeah. dragons were like a, 
um, like beings of immense magic and stuff like that yeah. was really interesting and um matt cross the black like oh yeah this is really super interesting like it's uh, like a background kind of pulling the strings kind of character yeah he's like a background sort of pulling the strings ma- uh, mage but mm. he's also like fighting in the war mm. and like a thousand dark ones can't do anything to him. uh great ones can't yeah. do anything to him he's got some kind of magic that like is different from all the worlds that, that mm. like we we're witnessing in there i thought that the um the actual pace of the story went really well like yeah you when you started it off you you're interested because you're like oh there's a, a random boat mm. that's sh- washed up on 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 shore and it's so strange because it's unlike anything that anyone's ever seen before yeah and then it slowly ramped up into a war mm. and then like it ramped up into a massive war mm. and then it spans like the whole story spans what 20 years yeah or it's uh, just amazing and um like the things that you see along the journey like um pug and thomas has a friend and the friend wanted to get with Pug's childhood, like, sweetheart. Yeah. Who's the yeah. princess of the, of the, of this world. Yeah. And he ends Eventually up dying. Does. And I thought that was great. I thought that, like, mm. like, he's a character that you all, like, kind of mourn the mm. rest of the other book. And that's right. Because they eventually get together because they think Pug's dead. Yeah. And it's been years and years and years. And uh, they basically, yeah, they form the relationship. And then that falls apart because he used to go off to his homeland or somewhere Do in his yeah. yeah he dies there and I thought that um Laurie the bard who was just so happened to be oh, captured and yeah, like, yeah. dragged to that world yeah I thought his his part in the story was really interesting as well where he he actually brokered the deal between mm. the two worlds to try and stop the war and when yeah. they did broker this deal to stop the war then Macross tricked thomas into like almost assassinating the emperor mm. that's crazy it's great and like um like yeah. what what happens you know the um who, who's the what was the name of like the the son of the duke but he was at home defending it Naruto. yeah yeah like his whole story was like could be a book in its own yeah and He's like really cool. him and like Martin and uh, the pirate guy, they go to the city. Um, Amos Trask. Yeah, yeah. And like, there's a whole thing in the city, and they get the um, they bring back that. I feel woman. like it's what Game of Thrones should have been. Right. Like the the TV show. Sorry. Like I know the books like its own thing, but I felt like the the TV show always like gave these promises of these like stories and then they mm. really paid off or they got new actors and then, then like yeah. they just dropped stuff but I felt like this was really really good and it really fleshed out and mm. did a good job mm. uh, yeah I'm I've done the whole trilogy now oh okay cool uh, I just finished a third book um, oh, about a day or two ago oh yeah and um, the second one just as good as the first one okay the third one, really good, but not amazing. Okay. And uh, the end was good too. So, yeah. yeah, just a really good round, all around story. And there's like 15 extra books as well. And there's lots of even more interesting yeah. characters that, that show up. It's a big series. If you, I think it's built of many series to make one big series kind of thing. What about that character who, because um, Arudi gets captured at one point, eh? Oh, uh, in the city. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a thief boy that helps yeah, him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thief boy becomes invaluable later on. Okay. And he's like, he works himself up from like, uh, this like, kid on the street and it's just amazing. His okay. story is so amazing. So I heard, um, the next series, if you're doing it, um, uh, by publication, covers some of the same events of this first book from a different, um, angle yeah, yeah yeah it does i guess from the uh serrani or something yeah um oh i didn't think so at all i thought that uh, maybe it's a maybe there's a different i think it's like after like post what you've read as well oh okay yeah probably yeah probably because it's like raymond d feist and jenny 
what works or something oh okay okay Carry yeah. yeah no very cool very cool um there's so much to it though and then each each interesting character that you sort of get mm. attached to has to seems to have their own book as well where like later on they like team up with another guy and then it turns out that, that guy's got a book okay. as well and wow yeah it's, it's just really cool yeah i absolutely loved uh this book hopefully you get on this the, ne- uh, the other ones so yeah, yeah it's probably going to be my next when i audible rolls over it's probably my next buy yeah yeah cool um, i don't know when i'll read it probably soon um what else uh, did you feel somewhat uh there was actually almost a feeling that batman and superman met for the first time when pug and thomas get back together yeah yeah you're right there like that that felt so um climactic to me it it felt felt like it really paid off it felt like that was uh what we wanted to see so long and um the stephen stephen hunt book the fucking uh what do you call it oh the the jack cloudy jack cloudy that was that was terrible you had two main characters and they didn't they literally just said hello to each other yeah and, the, <laughs> and, and it was built up to be like this war and stuff it was just, yeah. but it, you really had a um a great feeling that these two best friends and they and the interesting part of that is that that there was a magnetism about them mm. that they were both wanted to tell each other this each other's stories mm. but it was such a brief encounter that they would have to wait yeah and I was like, wow, fucking hell. And they've both been, like, worn down as characters, but also grown. Yeah. Yeah. And I also, I really loved how um, Thomas, like, beat the Valhuru. But by beating the Valhuru, the Valhuru sort of, like, learned compassion, almost, in right. a way. And, yeah. Like, he became this ancient creature who could live for a hundred years or so. Mm. You know? Yeah, that is, um... I don't think it's like a copy or anything, but there's similar elements in the first Chronicles of Drust the, Drust the Legend. So you know Snaga, the yeah. axe he has, that was like possessed. So I won't, this is like very early on in the book, so it's not like a major yeah. point, uh, plot point. But basically that was like his granddad's axe and his father because of what his dad was like he was like a bad guy like murdering people and shit like he was hated he was like basically exiled and he had to go from town to town because people would find out and like kick him out of town oh yeah yeah and um Drus grew up seeing his father as a coward and um eventually once Drus, Drus grew up his father's killed in like this raid and shit and then his his wife's taken which is covered like they talk about yeah, 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 yeah. and it takes him seven years to get her back and all that but he grabs the axe and then the axe is like possessed and you can feel this like evil presence and he like he wants to kill people but because of his like iron code he sort of takes that out on bad guys and he oh, eventually wow. overcomes it in a similar way that uh, Tomas did oh cool yeah that's cool that's really cool Mm. it'd be interesting to to know that if anyone picked up snugger that had that same position yep. i don't want to say too much <laughs> obviously it does <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah no. but um that book is kind of like because like legend spoiled all of it anyway yeah it's like more about i really like legend stuff. but i didn't I, I didn't really get into the second one, eh? Was, uh, yeah, it was lost on me. Mm. You might like Waylander a lot more. It's more uh, grim, darky, and traditional kind of. Cool. Yeah, I might have to give that a go. Story. Yeah. So yeah, I just really liked. Um, lots of, lots of different elements to it. Everything. Mm. Everything worked. Yeah. Um, absolutely brilliant. I'm really glad I read it. What was a what was a good moment for you in it? Like, I think one of the, really interesting moments for me was in the caves with the dwarves mm. Thomas is like fighting these spider creatures and they've just yeah. never seen anything like it before yeah 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 um the one that 
hit me the most was when they were going through the the winter forest like that those couple chapters is that near the start yeah yeah before they go to the caves and they um i think it's i can't remember if it's before or after they get out of the caves but there's a scene where uh oh shit what, um, what's the magician's name colgan yeah he casts this like uh it's not like invisible not quite invisibility but they're in like a snowstorm and then the dark elves are walking either side of them oh yeah yeah and then like one of the um guards like goes up and kills one really silently and just that but in general that whole winter scene or few chapters just was fantastic see that's why i thought it did well as well was because this did span for a number of years you got yeah definite seasons mm. like the start of it you have like this washing ocean that's like smashing on the yeah on the shore and stuff and you have pug trying to seem like autumn yeah and he's trying to like um get a whole lot of seafood and stuff and he gets like lost on the way back mm. and then like the the huntsmen have to help him yeah and then like later on you do get the snow bit and then mm. like when you're in the um Calowan world it, like their seasons are completely different the sky's like green or something and like fucking yeah it's like sunny and it's always like summer and mm, stuff like and that like very humid yeah very humid yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. especially like he was like when he was a slave like working chopping the, the trees and, and yeah, yeah in the swamps yeah. yeah see like there's a lot of like interesting description mm. and there's a, a lot of uh, interesting elements to like the the habitat habitats and mm. stuff there and the, the biomes and everything and I think that's great I think that you have to have diversity in a fantasy book like that it can't just be we're walking through the forest the whole time and fucking nothing. Okay, I'm changing mine to nine. And like, just talking about it, I was like, fucking, like, pretty much everything was so good. <laughs> yeah, I, I really liked it. So, yeah. I'll, I'll give it a nine too. Double nine. Yep. Sweet. That's us Rain. for that one. Raymond cool. advice.